So my main graphics card is Gigabyte's GTX 980 Windforce. So that's what I'm gonna be putting inside the Razer Core this time, and we're gonna run some, I'm gonna play some games, show some uh, FPS, some animation and 3D rendering uh, in, a, in a professional workflow to compare what the Razer Core can do with Razer Blade Stealth, and then also with just the Razer Blade Stealth alone. The professional workflow discussion is shorter, so I'll do that first. I found some pre-built scenes from a website that I'll put in the description and imported them into Maya and Blender. What I found was that Blender took it like a champ. The poly count for that scene wasn't too large and it was nicely separated into different layers so I could reduce the complexity of the scene to work on specific areas, something I recommend all 3D artists do since it allows for smoother experience regardless of your workstation's power. Whether the core was attached to it or not, the scene wasn't lagging or stuttering when moving around and setting animation placements. All I did for animation was to have the camera move deeper inside the room over 100 frames. Render times for this 100 frame animation were about three hours, a little over three hours for the GPU accelerated render with the core, but significantly longer at well over 10 hours without the core. And so in this case, that shows that the core really would have helped out with this. So next I moved into Maya. I honestly don't really know how to use Maya as I've never really used it and never had a reason to use it other than to do this review. All I did was open up the scene, move around, select a bunch of mesh, uh, meshes, again tried to move around, and then I did a little bit of sculpting without really any direction or, or thought of how I wanted to do it. Both with and without the core, the scene panned and rotated just fine. But when I selected a body with a high poly count, the, the stealth without the core was sluggish and hard to work with. With the core attached, I never experienced any stuttering or sluggishness. With Autodesk Fusion 360, which is a, not so much of a animation and artistic program, but more of an engineering tool or a prototyping tool, there was no sluggish or stuttering, stuttering at all while modeling random low poly count geometry. I didn't really have a complex assembly to work with, but in a previous job uh, that I've had that in my professional experience, I did notice sluggishness on a desktop workstation that I had with significantly more CPU power, but a little bit less GPU power than this Stealth Plus Core setup I have, I have here. The only issue that the Stealth Plus Core will have is that is during render times, if there's significant ray tracing, or if you're using ray tracing in the viewfinder, as that uses a significant amount of CPU. Fortunately, we can now, due to an update, offload the ray tracing and rendering into the cloud renderer so that the limitation will be overcome. Now onto the video game performance. The games I chose to review are Rift, which is a free-to-play MMO game by Tryon Worlds. This game is very World of Warcraft-like, but with some serious character innovations and a wardrobe system that I believe to be done right. Next I chose League of Legends, which is a mainstream MOBA that is extremely pervasive in the industry, and I'd be surprised if you as the viewer haven't played it yet. <laughs> uh, and Warframe, which is a free-to-play third-person space ninja shooter game, and that doesn't even fully describe it. It's one of those games you really have to play to get the scope of it, but that was made by Digital Extreme, and it is an excellent free-to-play game that's definitely not pay-to-win. So I chose these three to benchmark against because they offer a variety of resource usage scenarios. Rift is extremely heavy in the CPU and only recently adopted multi-core performance. League of Legends is a much easier game to run in general and it would expose really poor performing laptops. I don't think I've ever really had a laptop that struggled to play it. Finally, Warframe, which does really well to offload most of its resource usage into a GPU. And so if you don't have a GPU, you really have to run it on the lowest settings if you can even run it at all. But with the GPU, it definitely scales to be a really pretty game. I did play a little bit of StarCraft II, but I didn't focus on that as much, but I may just touch on it briefly. So unfortunately, my capture software wouldn't pick up League or Warframe, so my footage is pretty much a rift and a little bit of StarCraft II, which is okay with me because I suck at League and Warframe, so I'll save myself the embarrassment.
My setup here is a, as I said earlier, is a Razor Blade Stealth with the Razor Core and that only has Ethernet and a GTX 980 inside. Now this is important because that means I'm using the monitor that, that comes on the, the Razor Blade Stealth. And I did that for the professional workflow as well. That is a QHD or essentially 2K resolution display. So what this means is that I not only have to send the data out to the core for the GPU to process, but then the data has to come back. And so that means that that 40 gigabit per second transfer speed may be limited. So in this scenario, I am definitely working with a worst case scenario situation where I am really limited by the bandwidth of, of the Thunderbolt 3 as well as playing on a significantly higher resolution than my monitors are otherwise. Starting with Warframe, I ran at max settings with the core and it was totally playable. No hiccups, no nothing. Uh, with, without the core turned on, it, it was graphically turned as far down as I could and it was still barely playable. Uh, I, it, graphically, it rendered just fine, but every time I tried to move, the input lag was so bad that I, it was unplayable. So in this case, adding the Razer Core made the Razer Blade Stealth capable of running Warframe at all. Moving on to League of Legends, I left the default settings the way they were. I didn't touch them, so whatever it turns on and runs when you first install it, that's the way the settings were. And it ran smoothly the entire time. The only change between having the core attached and not having the core attached was my ping time, which I attribute that to the difference between Wi-Fi and Ethernet for my home network. Rift was another story. Unlike the other options, even with the core attached, the game wasn't that well playable at its highest settings. As, M as MMOs go, the interface was fine, but the game lagged really bad. It was hard to do much without the core. In the task manager, it reports to your CPU usage. It was capped out the entire time. With or without the core, the CPU, in this case, of the Razor Blade Stealth was the bottleneck in playing Rift. Now, you can turn down Rift to a extremely low resolution, low poly count uh, version of the game and it's playable. Um, it's definitely not as pretty and, is, and in some cases if you play a stealth like character it becomes a little bit more difficult to tell sometimes whether you are stealthed or not. You have to pay attention to your buff bar uh, but it does become playable in those cases. Now I will say because this has been on the 2K monitor when I tried playing Rift with, with the core attached, outputting vi video to an ultra-wide 2560 by 1080p monitor, Rift was totally playable. There's, there was no, there were very few hiccups. The CPU was definitely taxed, but it could keep up. And so what this tells me is that the resolution of the 2K monitor on, on board for the Razer Blade Stealth was a bit too much for that dual core i7 to handle. In conclusion, does Razer Core enable the Razer Blade Stealth to play heavier games and professional workflows? The short answer is yes, but with an asterisk. For the most part, professional software is well optimized, and so the Stealth alone can be used for smaller scale projects, and the Core can be leveraged to render uh, heavier projects or use its OpenGL or CUDA functionality to make up for the Stealth's dual core and integrated GPU for the more complex tasks. For most newer games that heavily utilize GPU, the Razer Core will do just fine. But for those CPU intensive, potentially older games or games that are running on older engines, the Razer Core just can't help the Razer Blade Stealth compensate. So before you decide whether this system, whether this works for you or not, make sure you look at the games that you want to play, look at the requirements, the system requirements, and look to see if the CPU required is significantly more powerful than what the Razer Core can handle. So I hope that was helpful and answered the questions about how well the Core works with the Razer Blade Stealth. Please comment below and let me know whether or not, uh, whether or not I hit all the points that you wanted to see or if there are some more questions you have. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.